So uh, I think if uh, we have everybody from the waiting room, we can uh, start. Hello, everybody. Hello. Okay. So um, um, hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to this uh, second prior art uh, session. Uh, after the success of uh, Thursday evening uh, session with Mikhail Houdin, we are uh, moving swiftly to uh, uh, one of the um, sessions I'm uh, really looking forward to. Um, prominent winemakers, but first I want to just give you a bit of housekeeping, a little bit about uh, what uh, to expect. We are expecting this session to be about an hour. We might uh, go a few minutes uh, later. Uh, the plan is for the session to be interactive. So like last time, it was very interactive. It was brilliant. Uh, keep talking. Uh, you'll notice that as you come on, we came on, the, you have an option. The video is, uh, uh, is an option. Uh, if you want to keep it on, that's fine. As, uh, uh, the plan is uh, for the microphone to be off. Uh, if uh, we decide to bring you on, uh, the host uh, will uh, bring you on and we can um, then uh, uh, hear you. Um, so a chat, you'll see the chat box on the right. Uh, feel free to write your questions there. We will try to read them out, either the winemakers or the co-hosts. And um, if uh, we, forgot something or you think we, we missed something, sorry about that, but uh, if you hover over the screen, you'll find the buttons to control the chat. And if it bothers you, uh, you can uh, always uh, uh, close the chat box and you won't see it, but it will still be there. Uh, that's all, so that's all the tech stuff. We can uh, start uh, talking about uh, uh, wines. So again, welcome everybody. It gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, for the second time, because last session Sarah was on, but this time she is the main uh, guest, Sarah uh, Perez and uh, Rene Barbier the fourth, and uh, it's uh, <laughs> we have uh, yes, uh, as as you're saying on your website, not the bearded one, the fourth. Uh, so uh, we um, just to give you a bit of background, uh, of course. Uh, uh, Rene and uh, Sarah represent uh, two uh, great estates. One of the, we hi uh, highlighted uh, in last week's session, the uh, five, uh, if you like, pillar, pillars of Riorat. Uh, and um, it's uh, uh, Rene's father that uh, started the Clomo Gador and uh, um, Rene is involved there still and um, grew up there. And uh, Sarah, of course, with the, her father, uh, uh, Jose Luis uh, Perez, a um, famous winemaker in Priorat, uh, was her inspiration. But they moved on and uh, started their own projects. And that's uh, probably what I suspect they'll want to talk about. So without me going on and on about it, let's hear it from you. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> yes. Let's. Uh, I, I, yes. <laughs> I, I want to hear. Okay, so to to give you to give you some uh, some idea of, uh, I just uh, of course you you were talking to on different media and different uh, uh, occasions about your background. Um, I specifically yes. want you to briefly uh, talk about your uh, um, childhood, about your uh, um, the what brought you to uh, love wine. I know that you come from wine families. It's, um, a, I want you to talk about what it's like to be a, a children of um, famous winemakers. And if you start from there, I'll, t I'll, take it I'll take it forward. Okay. <laughs> well, um, um, would be not easy, huh? but, um... When we have arrived in Priorat uh, with my parents um, in 81, uh, my, my, my father wanted to move from, from the city to a, a, a little village and, and to be connected to the agriculture again because he's coming from a, a, a little village also. And when he arrived here, he discovered that uh, the main um, Cultive the main crop was the vineyard, and people cannot study it about that, you know. So it was not uh, 
something about a prestigious thing. You know, the people here was not um, proud about to, to um, work on the vineyard. And that was the, the, the most important thing in the region. So he was obsessed to make a school about that because he mm-hmm. thought that if the people could form themselves, they could love that, that job. So um, the first thing she, she, he made was, was the this, this School of Viticulture and Enology here in, in the region, in Priorat. That was the first school in Spain uh, about enology and viticulture. And that was very important because it was a referent during a lot of years in the main Spain about enology and, and viticulture. And then uh, Rene's father was contacting my father because wanted to make something special in wine here. So they, they have started uh, to do that, you know, all that movement of recuperation of, of the wines of Priorat. And, and, and I was very young and, and absolutely I, I, I didn't like wine at 14 or, or at nine or at 15. And, and, and when I was a little bit uh, older, around 18 or 19. Well, what, what uh, I, I, I really didn't want was to make the same as my parents uh, did. So uh, I, I was just fixing my, my vision, my view to, to biology, mm-hmm. animals, plants, but, but in another mm-hmm. way, not, not in wine because I, I used to work every weekend. I was coming back from Barcelona and, and I, I used to work at home. And I had my, my just one clear idea. I never will join the wine world. And, and, and that was so clear, you know. But I don't know, one day I wake up and I ask myself what I'm doing here in Barcelona. This, this, this is not me, you know, um, it's wine into my plot, you know, and, and I decide to come back home. But since another perspective, you know, my father was a well known in that moment and he was very uh, pedagogic, but at the same time he was leading the project. And my vision was another, was always through the biology, always through the ecosystem, the ecology, and one moment arrives that uh, my father uh, was, was taking a, a step uh, behind me and say, okay, you can take the, the you know, the, the right. right. Yes. And, and that's it. It was 1996 and, uh, and, and, that, and that was my place. It, For me, it was uh, easier because uh, I don't remember what's the, the first time I drink wine. I think all my life I drink wine. <laughs> In my house, it was very normal to drink wine. And all my generation and generation was producer of wine. The first, first step uh, before the phylloxera was in France, after it was in Catalonia, in Tarragona. Tarragona had a label. And when my, my family lose this label, uh, we start to, 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 to my father to restart to, to involve in one project and one of the, this project was Cosmogador in the beginning. But um, when I was young, um, I live in, in Tarragona, in the city, and I, have, I was a very bad student, really, really bad student. And, um, and when I was 18 years old, um, I decided to live in, in, um, in uh, in Gratayops, in, in Clomogador, was a very small house and no electricity and a really small. And, but I decided to, to, to go this place because I really like the, the, the naturaleza, I don't know, the nature. nature. Uh, nature. And I, this idea of to live in the nature was for me very exciting. And I start to, to live in this place when I was uh, 18 years old in uh, 92. And at the same time, was the, it was the moment of, of this all close was separate. And I helped my father because with, in the beginning, everybody need to help and ask for me. Um, and at the same time, I studied in a small school um, in Falset. 
was a school that was created for the, the, uh, the Scarlet Father. Um, but I remember a few months after three or four months that I started this new life. After three months, I'm a very clear idea that is my life. I'm sure I like this idea. I like to make wine. I like this. Uh, I like uh, this. Uh, this world of the wine, wine world it was wonderful. After th I remember in ni 19 years and three months, and I'm sure that is my job. No? And that was in 92. I started and, uh, with uh, and you know, you knew each other um, most of your life, right? Yes, yes. We, ha we have made the, the, the first yes. vintage of all the clothes, 89. 89. Yes. We were making the harvest together, all the different clothes, and, and we had meeting there and, and before. But uh, I was a very nice student and very focused in my life in Barcelona, and, and, and he doesn't. So. <laughs> but it, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was it not wasn't the, wine studies, right? It wasn't wine studies that you were doing. Sorry? It wasn't wine studies. Well, uh, no, no. I, I, I have studied biology and then enology, but after okay. biology. So uh, what brought you eventually back to uh, Priorat? And what kind of Priorat both of you encountered uh, in the early 90s? And um, have you had back then some ideas for new wines? Or were you thinking, actually, our parents making wine that uh, is well received, scoring well, uh, people love it? Maybe that's what we need to continue to make. I, I think we have uh, started and, and learned from our parents. So um, we are not a pure second generation, you know. We, we have been working and learning and starting with them. So we were mm -hmm. um, observing all, all, all the things that they were starting up, you know. So finally for us, the, the wines from the 90s was the wine from us also, from our generation, you know. But working with them. So mm -hmm. after years, after 2000 and 2000, for me, the, the, the great change, I have different great changes, you know. The first was in 2000, the second was in 2008. And, and it was 10 years or 15 years without working with my father that I was able to start to think by myself, you know? But we have started with them. So for me, the 90s, the wines from the 90s were just perfect. That was the idea. And, and for me, were perfect. And, and, and they are perfect also, you know? Yes. But uh, soon, enough, <laughs> soon enough, you had uh, that uh, sensation that you need to do something different, something that is yours. So yeah, when, but, but some years after, yes. later, you know, I think that we have arrived uh, because there is something that uh, was not in my, in, in my case, I, I remember that I was um, uh, going further with the, with the ideas with, from my father about sweet tannins and nice concentration. I was going further in that and good ripening of the, of the grapes. And I was going further, 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 and until 1999. That yeah. was like making the harvest at 16.5, and and tasting and saying, "Wow, I'm arriving, I'm arriving to the limit. There is nothing after that. I need to move uh, to another way, you know. <clears throat> but I need to explore all that way that I have started with my father. And and in 2000, I changed. But, uh, and, and, and it was very confused during a lot of years because was, was, was something, the sensation sometimes was that I was making something that was the confronting with my father and was not that, was just looking for my place, for my pleasure, for my vision of the world. So first I needed to be in peace and recognize the work of my father, of my grandfather, and of my grand grandfather. All the different generations of the winemakers in Priorat or the wine visionaries in Priorat. And when I recognize that, 
all the good things that they have apported to the wine world, then I could start it to, to make an exploration to my wines, the wines from my generation. So you had, you had that sensation that you have uh, some, uh, not, not um, uh, contrast to your father, but, uh, but just uh, some, something that you wanted to explore. Yeah. And, uh, That's it. So in, my case, in my case, huh? yes. and, and, and we are living together, we are sharing a lot of things. It's like the people think that we are living the same and we are like in two worlds, you know? So I, I think his, his sensation is different. Yes, in my case, um, for me, that I am really agree from Sarah. In the beginning, it was the same, the collaboration with my father. But probably for me, the, the moment more important to, to, to sure is when, when we start to make wines, Sarah and me together, and we start new projects, like uh, La Viña del Buito One, uh, Sarah René O2. Also, we made wines um, like a consultant, Domino Vive, um, O2 also. That was really, really, really a new, new approach of a lot of the, the, the new uh, influence, very important in that moment. And in case of Mogador, that's arrived, these ideas, these are the new ideas for me in 06, and the second step was 11. For me, the moment more important to change it. But in my personal, um, I think that, sure, when Sarah started in my life, sure, a lot of <laughs> influences here, no? And these new projects are sort of Venus Universal, when I arrived in the 06, uh, many things changing. Uh, and sure, I also now uh, one part of Mogador, and Mogador is different, sure, because, um, because I, I know Sarah, and we, start, we made some wines together. Maybe I can jump, jump in for a second. Well, what's a lot of echo? Ah, okay. Um, but basically just uh, maybe we can kind of, we can talk about, uh, you, you, have a, you have a lot of projects, you guys together. I mean, there's, I was talking with uh, someone when I first visited you eight years ago and you have four kids. And he said, it's good you have four kids because there's a winery rating for all four kids. <laughs> uh, because you have, so there's Close Mogado from your side, Renee, and there's Mats Martinet from your side, uh, Sarah. And then there's also your cousins who are running Sims de Porrera in Porrera, which is a lovely project as well. Uh, and then together you have La Venus Universal, Venus La Universal, sorry, in Via Monsan. And then there's the Belvisus project, which is sort of a separate thing from, from, from Mogadou, but you make it at Mogadou. Uh, and once we have yeah, Bina de Wheat, which is a really interesting project. It's a very small thing. If you ever come to Purirat, you should check it out. It's them and six other friends who make this one wine together. Really delicious wine with super cool labels, different label every year, but, but always awesome. Um, and then what else? You, Sarah, you also have a project in Vio Tarragona? A little yes. bit? You've made, okay. Oh, it's both of you. Okay, I thought it was just Sarah. Okay, but it's both of you. Um, and then what, el what else do you guys have? I, I feel like I'm forgetting something in there. Well, we start, we are more focused in La Figuera uh, village, in La Figuera Las Garnachas, and yeah. this, we are a project in Venus, but it's like, like a no vineyard, but also I'm involved in come to and a little bit to help syndicate La Figuera with the cooperative. This, this project is all together and we are, one is not us, but we help, and, but this village for me is a lot of energy to put in this village and the new, in these uh, Garnachas from La Figuera. It's for me, I spend a lot of time here. I love this place. And so you, is, is, is your dad still the one making a spectacular or? Yeah, it's my dad, it's my dad. It's okay, he's still doing that. So maybe uh, you could talk a little bit about why Garnacha is, is super, super fantastic, especially, um, so La Figuera is, is at high altitude. It's in Vio Monsan and it's a very different thing. Sorry, Liz, you want to say I'm just going to say, um, for those of us who are not as familiar with Priorat as we should be, would it be possible for you to write down the names of all those domains? Because um, just so that I've just got a, an idea in the chat, just saying what the domains are. Yeah, can you do that? <laughs> Mikhail, that's I mean, you can do it later, but um, 
Okay, uh, if not, what, I'm... Uh... Wait, why, why don't you guys <laughs> talk a bit about... Yeah, you can can it. Pass it. <laughs> yeah. Talk, talk a bit about Garnacha, That's maybe, first. and I'll, I'll write That's the the, 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 the uh, sellers. Thanks. Well, it's, it, just before before you talk about the Garnacha, I just wanted to say, um, I, I, um, I wanted to lead in my... Uh, typical way, slowly, maybe too slow, from the prior rock days, from the uh, growing up days, rebe maybe a bit rebellious days of the tw your 20s uh, into what led you to Venus and uh, going to Monsanto and even in the prior rock wines that are different. So maybe a bit more. And Mikel is uh, right there talking to you, not in Catalan, in English, but talking your language and uh, maybe it's a. Uh, it's good to just take a step back and explain first what made you go to Monsanto and what kind of wines. Uh, and and yes, by all means, I want we want to hear about the Cariniena and Garnacha qualities of the past and qualities of the raw material that you have now. It's a big subject, I know. Step by step. Yeah. Um. I. I. I well, I used to work in, in Clos Martinet in, in, in Priorat, but, um, but and, and this is it near Gratelups, you know? And and I used to live in Falset, that it's Monsanto appellation. It's just five kilometers between them, nothing. But no, you move, no, nothing, five kilometers, you know? It's like, like this, but five kilometers. But, um, it's true that uh, we move from one appellation to another. And uh, what I used to do is working in vineyard in, in, in Priorat with that hot weather and when, when the, the sunset was, was there with very low light and I, I took my car and just drive that five kilometers to Falset, and when arrived to a Monsanto appellation, everything was light and fresh and, and different. And, and that was my, my, my way every day during a lot of time. So when I arrived in, in 98, that was a, a vintage very um, um, hard because it was very concentrate, nice in that moment, you know, so sweet but very hot and, and with a serious problems of dehydration. I was just dreaming uh, to make wines more elegant, tensionate, another thing. So in 1999, I was just uh, realized that I was leaving. I was, I was uh, mm, sleeping in a nice place that was Monsanto, that in that moment was not Monsanto, was the Appalachian Tarragona, very huge and very denostate and very non-prestigious. And, but, but that I had the nice clima to make that tension and, 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 and material wines that I was searching for, you know? So in 1999, I was starting a project in, in Monsanto that was Venus. So Monsanto DO is uh, just uh, let us know when when was it established as a DO? Two thousand and one. Okay, well, so two thousand one with the vintage of two thousand, but it was two thousand one. Yeah. So the the idea came to you then, and uh, obviously the. Oh, well, because it was my skin who was talking for me. You know, it was like something that I was. I had the experience, and and I was searching to make. I was. Uh, working in Martinet to make wines more elegant, more tensionate, more ethereal, but was not possible, you know? And when I was arriving every day to Falset and finally I said, oh my God, I'm, I, you know, I, I, here, I, I, I need to make the wine here in, 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 in Monsanto, in Falset, you know? So I have started in Venice. And for, from 1996, I, I, I was working also in Simse Porrera in the cooperative from Porrera with the, with the project with Simse Porrera. And um, I, I, I fell in love with the Carignan. That was a non-prestigious uh, grapevine that we had. And, and I discovered the Carignan. So when I have started in Monsanto, 
uh, I, I thought this is this is a nice place for Carignan because what I was in love from the Carignan was that side very uh, with the low pH, tensionate and 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 fresh, you know. So with the climate from Monsanto, I thought, wow, this is my wine. So I have started in Venus with Carignan and Syrah, but but I. I I didn't want to hear about Grenache, you know? Grenache was so sweet, so seductive, so evident, so easy. And, and I was very bored about Grenache. But for me, the, the nice side was, was, was what the Carignan was expressing. But uh, now, uh, sorry, now you have uh, Grenache uh, in the majority of, uh, I, I, I just checked the latest uh, uh, vintage of, uh, the Venus and the uh, uh, Dido, and uh, both have uh, a majority of Garnacha. Well, no, Venus no, but René came to the project and he brought the Garnacha and I said, okay. <laughs> so what was the difference in, the, okay, let's go to viticulture of the, and, and the raw material. What made, uh, first of you can give the characteristics of the two grapes um, from Priorat. Maybe even Priorat in the 90s and Priorat now, if you can, if you want to differentiate. And uh, also the Garnacha, uh, the uh, Priorat one uh, compared to uh, Monsanto. Oof. Uh, I remember <laughs> my, my, my parents and the first generation believed to Garnacha, but believed a little bit because these guys plant Cabernet Sauvignon, Sierra Merlot to help this Garnacha. He believed to Garnacha, but not only Garnacha. No, we think about, oh, Garnacha probably is a little bit delicate or very alcoholic. In that time, probably uh, need more tannins. In the, in the 19th, there was very lot of tannins and it's not very tannic. And that was the first step. Uh, for me, it was very important. I remember in 98, I tasted uh, the, the wines, the uh, new wines is, was uh, created in 95 and 96, like a Sims de Porrera, Grand Cloche, Fra Fulco, wines new wines from the old vineyards in Priorat. And I remember that tasting because I put my wine, a Mugador in the, in the middle of these new wines, and the, and the, the best wine was, was this new wine, was wonderful wine. And after I checked what's, which grape was in this wine, was Garnacha Carignana, Garnacha Carignana. Oh, not 100% Garnacha Carignana, but a lot of Carignana Garnacha blending of the old vineyards. And that was, wow, the Carignana is something special. And I remember in Mogador, we, we rent a new vineyard and we introduced the Carignana 20% in 99. And we start Magnetas also in the same year. Uh, we really was very interesting, but in the first step it was, okay, it's interesting, but only for the coupage, no Carignana, only a little bit, only a little bit. Okay, but we smell more, more, more. I remember in 2001, we started a vineyard boot, like it was 95% Carignana, but also because Sarah believed a lot of Carignana. And, this, and that's the, the perfect binome. It's uh, much easier to make in Priorat Garnacha Carignana because it's, uh, in many places of Priorat, it's a very, very hot weather. And the terroir is very hot. This liquorice is so dark. That is true. But it's true also is um, the Garnache in, 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 in Priorat for the very good balance. Only if you want to make 100% Garnache, it's not easy. You need really, really special vineyard or altitude or north face. But, it's not easy to make 100% uh, Grenache in balance. It's probably easier in some places like uh, the granite from uh, uh, Monsan or the village of uh, La Figuera because it's very high altitude. And the Garnacha, when it's in the conditions not so stressed, not so concentrate, I think this balance is, is better. Uh, in the conditions very, very dramatic, uh, the balance of the Carignana, I think, I love, uh, like, like Sarah, I love that. The decision in the beginning of Sarah made Carignana Syrah, that's, I never understand. The, the one for me was like, a, ah, two very, very, very reduced grapes together. Uh, why, no? Um, and was on arrive and it was wow, a little bit, a little bit, only a little bit Garnacha to open these two grapes. I remember 5% in the beginning, 10%, 20%, now it's only Garnacha. No, <laughs> only Carignana, <laughs> sorry, and Garnacha, 64 kilos. More Carignana, but Garnacha 40. Uh, yes, it's changing, it was changing and changing here and there. But, but now it is this first vintage of Venus of uh, only, only Carignana and Sida, and I think, oh, 
a mistake. That's it's wonderful. <laughs> but now I understand the wine. But in the beginning, for me, it was uh, impossible to understand that wine in the beginning. So, sounds uh, like uh, blending, uh, blending uh, sessions are uh, interesting. It's, a, <laughs> <laughs> it's a definitely a debate. Um, <laughs> yes, so Alberto is asking about uh, the main differences between Priorat and Monsanto. Uh, is it the Licorea uh, soil or primarily, or is it altitude difference, differences? Everything. They are two uh, appellations completely different. So the, the, the center of the region is, is called Appellation Priorat, and it's very dramatic, uh, the, the geography, because it's a schist soil, Licorella soil, that it's very dark and and that confers a uh, an ecosystem completely different from monsan all the plants that we have in priorat are um it's difficult for me in english but they are um, persistent um, leaves you know very dark color um, very aromatic compounds and everything is dark in priorat then you move to Monsan that is just the ring around uh, Priorat and we can work with a nice diversity of soils from argilocal care to pure kill care, uh, granite soil, a little bit of, of Lucorella also, but with a nice influence from the sea. So the difference temperature between night and day is very accused in Monsan and it's very, it's and it's so high in Priorat, nice and day, you know? You go to um, uh, the granitic side, especially where we work for Venus here in, in Monsanto, it's a it's, uh, granitic soil, very degraded, like sandy soil on the beach. So when you go there at midday, it's burning. Then you come back by night and it's completely cold. You go, it's the same here, you know? So it's it's a temperature that it's, it's transmitting to the grapes. You go to Priorat over the Licorella, you go at midday and it's burning, and you go by night and it's burning. So it's just taking all the light, converting into heatness, and it's cooking the grapes. So the concentration, the aromatic compounds are completely different, you know? The geography, the altitudes, so the climate. so. It's two areas that they are very close, but they are completely different, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very nice that we can manage different vineyards in different places because we can play a lot. Um, well, that, that explains us to the uh, uh, main differences in, uh, in regions, but uh, I, I want to know if um, your uh, vinification of the wines um, is is very different. Maybe you can highlight what is very different about the differences between Priorat, even the same grapes, the same kind of blends uh, between Monsanto and Priorat. Yes, I think yes. <laughs> I think we think it's very differently, Sarah and me. But uh, yes, in general, I th it's more. Yeah, but you are. Your yes. vinification system in Priorat and here is also different. Yes, because, so because it's it, not just you and me. No, because uh, I explained. I think the, um, the typicity from the winery is important also. We, I, Mogador, I have a history of my father, came to how, and I think Mogador has a style of the Mogador, the team. I, was in, I think it's more 15 together with my team. We are in a sea and we are one style, no? Okay, and I also, I, I work with my father and my brother, no? And okay, I'm here, but it's all the history of the wine and uh, the Korea and, the, and okay, in this place, I think uh, I choose many things, but in all my life, always a long, long maceration. It's like a 40 days or 35 uh, days or 50 days, always a long maceration. That's one of the style of Mogador. Uh, that's, it's not changing. I changed many things, but that is not changing. No, and that's one of the style of the Mogador. No, very long aging, always in oak. Now, okay, now it's food on. It's all all food In the beginning it was barrel and small and new, but this the idea. No, long maturation, long aging. When when you start a new project like uh, here, and we are 
the other yeah. other you heard me yes 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 i can hear you <laughs> we made a new wine with a new person a new team it's very exciting to try to make a new things okay and sure i made different dido and to 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 move it over but it's very exciting to make a different a difference not because I have a different, only a different grapes and different terroirs. True, every terroir probably has a, a better way, but also the history uh, is here, and I think that's uh, for me. In my case, it's important. No? It's, it's a big part no? to respect that idea, and we change, but a little bit and slowly, like this. No? And a new project. When you start a new project, we make what you want to do, and it's okay. When you start the wine from. Uh, from uh, Tarragona, uh, Rosé, I mean, totally different ideas and things I never made it, uh, never in my life, and I made in that in that project. It's quite exciting, you know. So you have you have better opportunity to uh, experiment uh, since you moved and since you make your own wines. But that brings me back to uh, to your parents and uh, to the wines that they made. And uh, I want to ask something about uh, uh, whether you think. Uh, first, I'll ask, what do they think about your wines? Because that will tie me to what I want to ask. What do they think of your projects? Not specifically about the wine, but your way. Wow. <laughs> What's the, no, the, the idea of, uh, in my case, is uh, made a project, uh, always evaluation, always to me. I don't know if better, but always to learn about. Ah, my my parent. Ah, sorry, sorry. Ah, I think it's our parent. I think is very. Uh, they are very happy. proud. Very happy. I think so. I I, I I I'm I'm happy you said that because uh, of course it's it's important, but it 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 leads me to what I wanted to ask about uh, um, the era, the time that they made wine, uh, and to ask you if you think. They made wine, uh, if seeing what you can experiment with, make them a bit jealous. Because uh, as uh, Rene was mentioning, the barrique and the uh, long maceration, uh, it's maybe um, the kind of uh, wine that they uh, made, made successfully, and then maybe feeling that it's what expected from Mogador, from uh, uh, Mas Martinet. And um, it's it's almost like a recipe you cannot really change much, and uh, seeing what you can do and uh, experiment with the terracotta and with the big uh, uh, what uh, uh, food is uh, and, and the short macerations and the wines that you create, are they thinking we wish we had this opportunity? Or oh, you never heard them say that. Us, since it's always <laughs> well, I I think that that they are. They, they our parents. Um, they they have felt uh, felt uh, very free always, you know, and and they are happy that we are exploring other things. Sometimes. They are like, what are you doing? My, my father is laughing all the day. It's like, wow, really? Are you crazy? But, but, but he is in peace by himself, and he is always like super proud, you know. And and he's telling me that he is proud, and sometimes he is able to say, wow, maybe if I I I I was I I would be able to think about that. Maybe I I use that, you know. But uh, but but. But they are here and they are working and 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 they can understand all of that and it's it's very nice you know i think it's it's nice it's, it's okay yeah. I, uh, I just had to ask one question um basically some yeah i don't know why it's doing this echo thing but okay i think it's better now mm -hmm. okay um the someone was asking if you're biodynamic and i was telling them in the in the chat that mogado is certified Biodynamic, uh, oh. and then so no, I thought you were. Well, the certification, no, but um, we are inorganic. We not uh, in organism the matter. Uh, my my brother is was introduced a biodynamic, but um, no, we are not certification. Okay, 
And then Sarah, you're doing everything certified organic in Martinet. Yeah, yeah. I, I certified organic because for me it's a minimum because I, I used to uh, buy uh, the things for for eat at home and 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 I, I used to just to check if it's certified or not. Uh, I mean, when people talk about natural and and it's not certified, I'm afraid. And, and that's it, because nowadays uh, it's like a super fashion if you are organic and biodynamic, and it's more super fashion if you are not certified. But uh, I, I, I don't take confidence with that. So for me, the minimum is, is organic, and I want it to be certified. And it, it's a question of confidence for me. And uh, I'm not working in biodynamic because um, I'm I'm not feeling nice with anthroposophy from 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 biodynamic. But I'm um, I'm I'm very a uh, super fan from Pfeiffer, the collaborator, and and I'm doing a lot of things and and working in that way. But uh, I'm not anthroposophic, so I cannot be biodynamic. So for me, this is different. It's not a question of manage of the vineyard, if not, it's a question of life. So, I, I, Moshe, could I ask uh, a question about a specific wine? Of course, of course. Yeah. Okay. So, basically, and this is a bit for, for Liz as well, because she's into, into the rosés, but, uh, I mean, Prirat historically has not probably been an easy place to produce a rosé because you have to pick a bit earlier and, you know, you need a bit, to, you need more acidity to kind of make a rosé that's nice and crisp. And the old style of rosés from Spain were pretty heavy. If you, I mean, they still make them in Rioja that way, and so you can still find them. But there's sort of a new, there's a new sort of dimension of rosé that's come out in recent years. Um, I, I was talking in my chat about Scala Day having this really nice crisp rosé. Uh, there's a very unique thing that they've been, uh, they've created, which is this which is uh, Dido, uh, mm. La Solucio Rosa. We were talking about this before we started the chat. This is a super, super curious rosé that's sort of almost not even a rosé, but then one of the best rosés I've had. And uh, maybe I think this really explains or shows really well sort of the differences of what you can try in Monsan. And maybe you could talk about it, a little bit about this wine, what the blend is, and sort of the approach to, to viticulture, because it's, it's a pretty unique wine. Yes. No, the, the rosé, the, the first approach of the rosé is true. Uh, you remember, Sarah and me, we start, uh, we, we, 10 years ago, we, we never buy rosé because uh, normally rosé is the paradigm of the fruity and easy wine. And uh, I respect, but it's not, I don't feel in love with that. And we don't, we're not, not very big consumer for that style of wine, uh, the fruity in general. Jose, white, or uh, red, but the fruit is not my passion. But um, yes, um, I remember we, we drink a wine uh, from the first time was uh, Jérôme Bressy, Cour de Motens, 2006, uh, 2006, uh, from Rasto, a rosé, uh, I think was uh, seven years old mm. in bottle, and was incredible wine. And what's okay in Rasto, Rasto is the hottest place in Rhône. And the rosé was wonderful, wonderful for me with this big mm, white, like a big white Mediterranean, big white, no? But rosé, uh, the difference is the in the grapes, no? Was the red grapes, but the same way and the white grapes, or oh, one of the the ways of the white grapes because you can make many 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 ways in white. But this is the idea. It's like a, and after that. I remember in the same year we all go to Can Roca. We speak about uh, Pitu of uh, that idea, and Pitu told us, "Made a rosé in Priat, not in Monsané. In Priat, sure, it's a good idea. In Priat, and we, but he's told, he, Pitu Roca told us, I always I listen Pitu Roca, no? and I, and I try. At the same time we start this in um, Priat to make um, experiments from rosé, like uh, the Pedre rosé, also is. Now, many years ago, we started the first experiment. At the same time, um, but we taste 
a lot of lot of rosés in the wall in the in the same year, and we experiment to to make this rosé of Dido rosé, and it was one of the wine more intellectual, more look. Uh, we, we find an idea, you no, know, the complexity of the champagne, but very Mediterranean and very this white, very big, and and that start me the idea. Okay, I, we choose the Garnacha. Ah, fourteen, nice. Oh, the, Garnacha, <laughs> the Garnacha, the Garnacha grape. Like a, I know the Garnacha has the full body. This no, I know the Garnacha when when it's quite early, it's very alcoholic. But this is nice because in the bad, in the slow temperature, dark press, sure we have very long, very long fermentation. Always that this this rosé is more than sixteen months, six months, eight months, a year to finish sugar. That's very interesting because this low low fermentation have created aromas like a champagne aromas, very creams, the yeasty, the, 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 this typical bread or panaderia, I don't know the name, you know, the, uh -huh. the name. That's because of very, very slow fermentation. That's one idea. But after we introduce other grapes like a Maccabeo, why Maccabeo? Because it's one of the best grapes for Asian. It's, it's, I don't know why it's Asian so well, the Maccabeo. I don't know why, but if you taste Condonia of Jura, is the, the wine, uh, uh, the best wine for for taste in uh, many years. Okay, that's Gonash is here for this idea, the Maccabeo for the structure of the wine. And after we introduced a little bit the Carignan, in the beginning it was not too much, for the city, for has a more city. Uh, years and years we put more and more more and more Carignan to, to, to keep this idea of this, this, this idea of full body and structure, but more a city. And after, th another thing was very important because I don't like the fruity. Asian, a very long Asian. That was yeah. in the beginning uh, the idea. Very long Asian. Okay, and that was very funny because in Priyat for reds, it's very difficult to for me eh, the idea to 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 use a very old oak because if you imagine this big Priyat, very big structure, big tannins. If it, this big wine has too rustic, it's impossible to drink. But the rusticity of the very old oak. In the in the profile more light, you know, like a rayas. Rayas is a big example. One of the wine more exciting in Garnacha is a very old oak, but the wine is not big, big in in in, in tannins or in, in, in structure. And this guy used barrels from a hundred years old. That for me was wow. And the idea to put this rosé in a very very old oak, but very very rustic, because it's, it's 16 months in a 50 years old. Udo from Mosel, this is the Asian, this, 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 um, this wine, was the idea of Rayas. Why not? It's, it's here we can to use the rusticity. Here we can to kill a little bit the, the, um, the, the fruit. No? And was, that's very risky. We, we, we buy these very old barrels and we put the wine and wait and wait and wait and wait. And after, okay, in the beginning was only a few barrels because in the beginning we made only a thousand bottles. Okay? Uh, we made that, we think it was interesting, but we, think, we didn't know if somebody liked or not. We think, wow, some freaky sommelier, sure, it's, it's possible to, to sell some guys. But after, we, well, it's okay, we sell quite fast. We made 3,000 3, bottles and after more and more and more. And now we're very surprised because more than 10,000 bottles of this style of wine, we think, wow, well, it's, it's nice because it's not easy wine to understand, no? Uh, probably it's okay, it's not easy wine, but it's quite beauty for people like no? because sure, 10,000 bottles is not only for sommeliers and very sure many people mm, drink wine. And I don't know why, but it's for us a very a good uh, surprise no? to sell. Mm. But one, one thing, I, why does it do this? Okay. Um, the, uh, so, is it gonna stop? Let's see, okay. Um, I, I, we, this wasn't really mentioned, but uh, as I understand it, uh, with, with Venus, basically, Renee, you're doing more of the cellar work, and Sarah, you're doing more of the viticulture. Um, so maybe you can talk a little bit more about what you're doing in terms of viticulture for, for the rosé or for the whites. Uh, are you having a different approach for the wines with the viticulture in, um, in Monsanto? Or is it very wow. similar to what you're doing in Pretty Um 
here we need to be agreed. No? So uh, during a lot of years, that was not easy. I need my parcel, my expression, and I'm fighting for that. And Brennan is the same, and it's fighting for that. So to be, you know, just from two to make one, that was very difficult. So finally, my great passion is the viticulture, and the great passion of Brené was more the seller. So we decide to separate that, but we need to be in touch because what we have learned is that um, depending how he wants to arrive, he will work and he needs to receive a, 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 a special balance of the grades. So we need to be agreed in that term. So, well, it's, it's, uh, we are, now we are trying to, to, to make it more together, all the decisions because it's, it's very, very important, you know? So we changed the, the parcel of Rosé. We, we start with some parcels and we talk about, uh, try these others and we change them. We introduce like um, the last parcel of a granite of a very old Tempranillo. Mm -hmm. We think about, wow, why not? And we introduce But that. we are agreeing that vision. So um, it, we are drinking the same wines. And, and there is a lot of times that we are not agreeing all the terms, but we try to, to draw a, a, a commune zone to be agreed, you know, to be, to be comfortable with that. You know? That's it. Now, uh, Mikel was uh, asking you about this uh, beautiful wine, which now I, I'm very curious to taste, and uh, I want to ask you. We about... will send a bottle, really. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Liz is first. I, I want to ask you about the wine that I uh, read uh, uh, again on your site and uh, got my curiosity going. Is uh, Sarah is your um, um, Venus uh, Blanc? Uh, that is. Uh, you, um, it sounds fast, incredible, the, the process that it goes to, the aging, and uh, so maybe you can highlight this wine for us. Well, it's René, so René can explain. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> taking, I'm taking vineyard. care of the vineyard, you know, uh, and I focus it on the vineyard, you know. What's the vineyard? <laughs> told, told this vineyard. It's a very special vineyard. This is a, a special Charello, and uh, it's a it, it was a, a nice surprise for us because there is it, it's not a, a common grapevine in Monsant and Sal. There is very few. And it's a very uh, little vineyard with a very concentrated grapes, very nice. And um, it's, it's, it's a fusion of the, of the argilical care and the granitic soil. And, and well, I, I'm falling in love with the vineyard. And when we, we start to work with that vineyard, it was very abandoned and it was, was like non-expression. And nowadays, uh, yesterday morning, I, I was there and it's, uh, it has a nice expression. You know, it's like uh, through, through that uh, special charello that it's, it's very old and non-clonal. Uh, if not muscle selection, we have a nice diversity in the vineyard that we can translate to, to the wine. So um, the first time in 2009 that we have took the grapes from, from, from the, the vineyard, we thought Monsan and Pansal, what's that? And we were not able to put in Vido Blanc and we separate just to check because we, we feel that Mm, the vineyard is fantastic, but Charello really here, you know, and it was not just lovely for Dido, if not just amazing for an special wine, you know, and um, we have started um, in 2011 without yes. sulfurous, natural wine, because it was just fermenting. It has a, 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 a special vigorosity, the vineyard, and it's, it's, it's just fantastic. Sarah, let me ask you about uh, the uh, Charello, uh, or you on the label call it uh, car Cartuccia. 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 Mm -hmm. 
But uh, Sharello, if you can just, uh, for those of us uh, who don't know uh, the characteristic, uh, we, we know it mainly from Cava, from Penedes, and uh, historically it's uh, from uh, this part of uh, 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 your uh, country, but it's, um, what characteristics? Tell us a little bit well, about uh, if, I, if I could add in one thing really quickly before that. Um, I just, uh, about two months ago, I tasted through a whole selection of Charello from, from Penedès. And there's a pretty distinct character on, on Charello and Penedès. It has a lot of weight to it. It's really good in the mid palate. has a lot of orchard fruits to it. Uh, and up there you find it primarily on, on chalky soils, you know, and you also, when you, when you get it up at altitude, it can have really great acidity. It's not too bad at lower acidity, is, at lower altitudes as well. But I, I, it's probably one of the, the most, the, the star white grapes of, uh, of Penedes. And, and here in, in Priorat, there, we, there's three main names, there's Charello, which is the one from Penedes. There's also Pansal, uh, which is what uh, Sara was just calling it. And then there's what you were saying, Sikarto Shah, which uh, basically the, the name of the monastery is the Kartosha. So Kartosha means basically of the Kartoshan. So it's, it's, you know, it's been here a long time, even though there's not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of it at the moment. But um, so maybe, I don't know, Sarah, if you can, and Renee as well, if you can sort of explain the, how it's different from, from Penedes. And I, I don't know, if people haven't tasted it from Penedes, first of all, go out and taste it, because it's a lovely, lovely grape. Uh, but I don't know if you can kind of compare and contrast what you're finding down here in Prirat, which is hotter and a more intense environment than what Penedes is. Well, um, we are working a little parcel of charello in Monsanto. And little, 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 little. Little. No, I'm not going to understand. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's, um, we, are, we, we know that, you know. I see our reference was Penedes and it was nice, but it was not what we were searching for, you know. So for that, we were making separately at the beginning. But uh, it was very, very nice, a surprise that this parcel is, is very peculiar. So for me, uh, I, I'm very bad in, in blind tastings, but uh, if you put a, a, a white Venus, uh, I say this is white Venus. And I don't know if this is the character of the grape variety. I don't know. I'm just working one parcel and, 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 and it's very special, you know? So it's full body. It's very strange because it's, it's ripening. And you can see th that it's taking like brown color, you know, and it's like, wow, it's, it's at the end of September, brown color, and you're tasting, and it's, and it's like, wow, I, I, I need to wait. But all that, that you can see with your eyes is that it's overripe, and it's not overripe. So it's concentrating, it's very complex, it's very full body. And and it's something very special. All uh, for us, it's very difficult to um, to determine the date of 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 the harvest because it's like three or four weeks that we are saying, Oof, maybe maybe next week, huh? it, and, and it's not moving. And everything, the the aspect of the leaves, the the color of the grapes, everything is 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 crying, ah, it's, it's harvest moment. And when you taste, it's another thing. And it's like, huh. so I cannot compare. I, I'm, we are just vinifying this special parcel, that's it. So, and it's different from the rest. And, and it's amazing. And the vinification, sorry. finish for the Charello, was the, this grape is, many years the last grape we pick in after the reds, after the Caranianas. Sometimes it's the last wine to pick. And always we have a very good acidity. If you compare to Garnacha Macabeo, two grapes are very nice, but the acidity is, is much less than these grapes. Normally it has less alcohol. Uh, it's very interesting because in the vintage, very a lot of water, which is difficult vintage, it's not a problem. We are very big skin, never is mm, damaged. And it's, uh, we have a lot of opportunity to, if you want, to make a very good uh, ripeness, if you want, because we have a very, mm -hmm. very good acidity, not a big alcohol, and the skin is always here. You can have the acidity to pick very early, and you made a cava, or very, very 
a, a white very plate, but you can to have a big uh, um, or more a, a better or longer uh, maturity, and also we have a very good freshness. I remember the 11 vintage is the only one year you know, like this is near 15 degrees alcohol in Charello, which is it's very difficult. Normally, it's much less. But you taste 11, and we have the freshness here. You have the it's, it's, we have a balance. Uh, and and we have a, a new uh, parcel over granite, and it's completely different. The um, uh, to, to make a, a mental a mental structure. Um, the mm -hmm. old vineyard from uh, calcareous granite, it's like Loire, and the pure granite is like Burgundy. Chablis, it's, it's, Chablis. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it's completely different, and and it's like wow. What's that? So the nice thing with Charello, it is a very quite high quality grapevine, but can gives you the modality of the terroir. So it's not a question of the grapevine, you know? It, we are not talking about Grenache, Charello, I don't mind. The parcel is incredible. And when you move the plants to another parcel and you plant, it's another thing. So. The Charello gives you the opportunity to express the landscape, and this is more than great. Fantastic. And uh, vinification wise, just quickly tell us what happens to this wine because uh, uh, it's, it's an interesting process that it uh, ages in the same barrel uh, for quite a long time and uh, it's a large barrel. It's, 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 it's direct press. New project, new ideas. And yeah. we are focused about the natural wine and no sulfur at all, because for all the wines, we are no, no, no yeast and no additions. But only, the only thing, many of the, our wine have a little bit sulfur, no? But we experiment a lot from the no sulfur at all, especially in the Project Sarene. We lose a lot of wine, but we start to have idea in the, was easier in the, um, no skin contact on the white process. I don't know why in the white wine was better experiment. And when uh, uh, when the first year arrived, the very good pH, big acidity. I don't know why, but we this wine no sulfur. And we start like this. And okay, I remember the first vintage eleven was like a Jerez aromas with you. I don't know, it's good. But okay, <laughs> the twelve another, and the twelve was like a, what was podridos? Uh, was really bad. A reduction. Reductive. Okay, okay, we keep the third. We the thirteen we made, and the thirteen was quite Very nice. Very Yeah, no, it was quite yeah. nice. It's like a classic wine. Like wow, why I don't know, but okay. But now we have three vintage. I remember when we made the fourteen vintage. Okay, now we have three vintage. We skip it and we sell anyone. But we start with in that moment we start to test in eleven. Oh, wow, it's nice. Okay, every vintage is different. If you want, it's, it's the same vineyard. We have the same stroke, the same. It's always uh, Venus. But always. it's a very different uh, year, much more than the normal years, the normal wines. Huh? The year is, is very different. But I, the idea of to keep a long time in bottle was always Venus idea. Oh, Venus, Venus label always is two years minimum in bottle. And that was very nice because after two years, we have three years in the sellers. Okay, we are sure that project is a project very important to make. And that was after three years of Venus. Well, that that's very special. Yes, yes, we start to sell this this bottle. But after three or four years, uh, we we have um, plenty of projects. Uh, we is in our, our cell. We never sell it because no. Okay, we try, but it's not very interesting to make. A new label. No? When we made a new label, it's because we are we are quite sure uh, we think it's a, something different, something special, and it's for many years. No, and that's uh, the idea of Venus. Or yeah, new vintage, a new label because it was also a new vineyard, a new grape, but also a new process, natural wine. No? Not so natural. What's happened always in Venus? Very long, very long fermentation, very long, always, but. Sometimes it's eight months, sometimes it's a year and a half. It depends on the vintage. Okay. Normally it's dike press, put in the the in the, um, the mimui, in the food, uh, small food. Mm -hmm. But if a really long fermentation, some years after a year, because it's sometimes well, it's more than a year, probably it's too okay, 
we put that in, I remember some years in, in Amphora, some years in, uh, in, uh, in the Majuana. That is not a big formula, but some years is eight months in the food and in bottle, but always, always, always is two, three years in between, uh, between um, okay, um, aging. aging and aging. always three years minimum. Now we sell 16. Seven. 16. And uh, just to um, um, answer, I've got two very identical questions from uh, Joe and Elia about the uh, uh, future of uh, white wine in Priorat, if you see more of a, a role for white wines in Priorat. Mm -hmm. And um, also, Liz, was, yes, <laughs> uh, Liz was asking about the altitude uh, that you were talking about, the uh, um, um, Venus Blanc, about... Uh, and uh, the, if the skins are uh, thick on these uh, grapes, and uh, uh, if you can uh, highlight these uh, uh, two questions. Well, um, I, in, in Pure, there is uh, a lot, uh, a ha very high percentage of labels of white wine since five, seven years ago. But the number of bottles is just uh, maybe eight or ten percent. But the people is just going in that way, you know. So I, I, I think it's a very nice future. But um, uh, you, you, you must know that we are into the south, and and in the wine world, the south uh, was very castigat. Uh, uh, we have received, you know, and um, you know, Winkler. Uh, one day they said that, "Where are we from?" It's just for sweet wines and wines in bulk, but but nothing, nothing interesting, you know. I think that the revolution of our parents was very important because we put Priorat in the world to say, "Hey, we are in the south, yes, but we are able to make something in." incredible in reds of course and of course the whites are from the people from the north and and it's something so heavy that that we have here you know so we have started to work into the whites and at the beginning we were using i think um, in my point of view um wrongly that was take ah we are into the south. We take the, the grapevines from the north and then they will be fresher and more acidity. But when you move the grapevines from the north to the south, they are horrible. They are no acidity, no complexity, nothing. It's not their place. So we need a lot of years to understand that our grapevines, white grapevines, they could be great to make great wines. So now it's like, for me, the white wines in Priorat is the silent revolution. It's uh, taken from 15 years ago, but it just step by step, very slowly, you know? Okay. But it's, it's, it's a nice future for the white wines in Priorat, for sure. It's just taking confidence. But uh, it's uh, for I sure a nice, oh. a nice thing. Sorry to interrupt, Moshe. Yeah, go on. Sorry, oh, is he going to stop making that? Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, no, linked to the, very, very quickly, linked to the white wines. Uh, I was thinking about what Mikel said in the previous um, session we had about Priora, about Cabernet Sauvignon and the international varieties. And I was wondering, linked as well to what you said at the beginning of the conversation about Morvedre, if with climate change, I don't know what the prospects are, but it's, are the people, the producers thinking about um, regional, yeah, let's say endemic varieties from Priva and Monsan just to substitute some other international varieties? Yes, but it's not just for, for climate change. I think that the um, pressure yeah. of the market it's 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 harder than than the climate you know the pressure of the of the climate so in the last 10 years or 12 we moved as producer um 
to 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 recuperate traditional and 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 disappeared uh, grapevines from our area to substitute, you know. Um, Ten years ago, the second, the, the first grape vine in Priorat was Grenache, um, red Grenache, um, and the second was Cabernet Sauvignon. But five years ago, the second was Carignan. Wow! Mm -hmm. So it's it 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 is the new mentality, you know. But uh, I think that uh, yes, probably the um, the Cabernet and the Merlot are not. Uh, so nice no to that uh, change climate and all of that you know to to adequate but and grenache you know if in the 90s we work with grenache at 16.5 what will arrive in 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 10 years more mm -hmm. you know so carignan probably monastrel probably picapol probably others you know that they are not uh, legal now, but they are from here also. They are the new vines that we can plant to to keep our freshness and 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 lower lower alcohol. You know, it's not just a question of of if they are not from here or yes, because I think that the Grenache is is the grape variety that that first will disappear for sure. Mm. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Frank. I want to uh, wrap it up here and uh, just uh, fascinating. I know that it's uh, been only, what, three days since you were allowed to uh, go out. So it must be uh, uh, fantastic uh, to be able to see the vineyards and to see some people around and to walk the streets. Uh, and uh, let's hope that uh, we can uh, all, uh, I'm very curious uh, to, to visit uh, sometime, hopefully soon. And, yes, uh, soon. <laughs> and see and see uh, see the vineyards and see the beautiful land of uh, uh, Priorat and Monsant. And um, I want to thank you again. Um, I just want to uh, tell you, uh, look forward to a session this Saturday. Very different. You're all welcome. I've got uh, a special guest. I somehow managed to uh, get uh, Jean-Michel Caz uh, from uh, uh, cool. uh to uh, to uh, talk to me. It's something wow. I was uh, putting um, in the um, uh, process for a few, some time before even the virus. But uh, now I think he's writing an interesting blog about the uh, time at home and uh, he's keen to talk. So I'm really looking forward to that. But thank you. Thank you very much, Mikel. Uh, the session last week was fantastic and your help tonight was excellent. Uh, and thank you for everybody for joining us. And thank you. Be safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.